Good morning. It's uh, fantastic to be here. This is very, very exciting, and there's been some great talks this morning. Um, I want to just correct one thing that Kenan said. Uh, she called it Tobias's methodology. <laughs> it's not mine, and it's not a methodology. <laughs> Two important points. <laughs> Scrum, was, um, Scrum is one of a series of uh, a set of um, ideas uh, under a broader umbrella called Agile that have been active in the software community for maybe the past 10 or 15 years, uh, accelerating in adoption very, very fast. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Scrum, which is my, my, uh, mainly my background. Um, what is Scrum? I describe it as a framework. I like to think of it that it's not a process and it's not a methodology. It's a framework of ideas that, um, when well understood, can allow you to create your own process to manage complex problems and com you know, to manage complex situations in a simple and lightweight manner. So it's very, we're looking, um, in fact, uh, just rolling back to Janine's presentation earlier, I think that Janine covered just about everything that I'm going to talk about now. So think of this as a, a follow-on with pictures. So I'm showing you some pictures. This picture is how our work environments should look and feel. Um, the Scrum space is a, is a playground, essentially. So we, we're, we're asking people to do all of these things, play, explore, inquire, discover, delight, collaborate, push your edge, push your creative edge, find your, find, find daring in your work um, and take risks. What we're looking at essentially is um, the ability to fail and the permission to fail. So creating environments where we can fail fast is what we're looking for. So I'm going to give you um, seven principles here based on the, some you know, ideas from Scrum and, and other agile ways of working that will help you fail fast. Seven's always a good number, right? Everyone likes the number seven. Seven management techniques for this and that. So I found seven things. Empiricism is something that you scientists will all be familiar with, and I'm sure I'm probably using it incorrectly. I have to say, by the way, I'm very awed to be in a, um, an, an event like this. Uh, <laughs> you know, as a high school dropout, uh, I've always been kind of uh, overawed by educated people, especially scientists, and uh, it's quite nice to be at an event where I kind of feel maybe I can hold my own here for the next couple of days. We'll see. Um, what I'm looking at here is the idea that, um, you know, as a couple of people have already talked about, we've got this idea that we want to plan things and figure things out up front. Um, and that has worked very well, as Jerry said, for a number of years. Is it sufficient now? Work, the work we, doing, uh, we do these days is becoming more and more complex in the knowledge industry and in the science industries. So um, perhaps we're looking at, uh, we need to be looking at alternative ways of doing things. And so this kind of like very fast inspect and adapt process allows us, allows us to reflect on what, we're, what we've learned and basically drive forward through hindsight rather than trying to plan everything ahead of time. So empiricism, self-organization, the second principle. Here we've got an idea that we talked about hierarchical organizations, Jerry talked about hierarchical organizations earlier on, I think um, Janine did too. And we also have our organizations are very siloed. We have people who are very specialized in certain areas and they stick to that area, and they stick with other people who are in that area with them. And so what we're trying to do when we create collaborative teams in Scrum is to slice through organizations across the silos and slice through organizations across the hierarchy as well. So rather than having you know, strategy teams of people who are sitting there planning out things, think tanks if you like, um, that by the time those ideas get down to be implemented, they become impossible to implement because they don't make any sense. We're trying to create teams where um, people across the organization in both directions collaborate. So self-organized teams. And the idea of self-organized teams is that um, the people closest to the problem are the best people to solve the problem. And so we kind of like, um, push the decision-making down to the lowest possible level. Let people self-organize around clear goals and clear directives, um, rather than giving them, directives is the wrong word, clear goals and clear vision. So to, to not really direct or to try and manage people's work, but to allow them to just figure it out for themselves. So collaboration. 
naturally follows on from self-organization. We want to be able to, in the software industry, we have people who are making requests of us, we have customers, we have managers, um, and we want to be able to sit down and have dialogue with these people rather than having documents that are handed off to us. So um, one of the important um, principles of Agile is that we, we value collaboration um, over comprehensive documentation. So the traditional way of working is to say, you know, I've, I've written these requirements up, it's in great detail, I've got every, I've thought about everything, I've dotted every I, crossed every T, mitigated all risks, now build the system. Uh, and by the time that system actually gets built, it has nothing to do with what was originally thought. And even if it does have, it's quite often um, too late. You know, the world has moved on and we end up with a system that is exactly what we asked for and not what we want. Focus. I think Kenan mentioned culture of scarcity earlier on. So the idea of focus here is to be able to create a culture of abundance by doing less. So rather than focusing on many, many things at the same time, we try and focus on one thing at a time or two things at a time and move that thing from concept to um, complete um, before moving on to the next thing. And that allows us to put all resources that we have on the, the, highest, the highest prioritized item of work, whether that's a project or a piece of research or whatever it is. So rather than dividing our time between different things, which means context switching, and context switching has a massive, massive overhead, maybe 20, 30% of our time can be wasted just rethinking where we were last time we worked on this thing. So by focusing and prioritizing, you can actually create this culture of abundance that we seek. Transparency. I love this creature. Anyone know what that is? Tell me, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Oh, you don't know. No, it's, uh, it's beautiful, though. It's a transparent thing. I found it last night, and I just thought, this is going on my slide. Um, transparency allows exactly what it says there, to foster trust uh, and courage inside an organization. It banishes fear and suspicion. If you can make what you're doing visible to the entire organization or group that you're working in, uh, you don't have to worry anymore. Um, even your mistakes need to be made visible. If you do something wrong, it's okay. Fail fast. Rhythm and ritual guide you towards a state of flow. Um, I found just in my life in general that when I get into a rhythm of, of doing things, whether that's running at a certain time every day, or you know, um, driving to work at a certain time. If I get into a sense of rhythm, things that are, I have more time. It creates it creates time for me, uh, and I think this is true with many people as well. Once you once you get into that rhythm, you forget it. At first, it's hard, but once you're in the rhythm, you forget the rhythm, and then what happens is you get into this state of flow, um, and you get so much more accomplished that way. It's quite extraordinary. So rhythm, and the last one. I think it's the last one. Emergence, is that seven? Yeah. Who's counting? Emergence, the best so solutions evolve, they are not created. That should sound very familiar uh, in terms of the world in general. So um, these seven principles, as I say, they, the, the idea of these is that they allow you to um, try things out and fail quickly and learn from that and move on to the next thing. And they're all designed to sort of work together. And the last image I've got here is a set of um, you might call core values, human values, that are essential for this way of working. You can't go into um, a scrum-like environment or an agile environment or the kind of environment that Janine and Jerry were talking about if you don't have courage, trust, congruity, humility, and a sense of service. So the last one I particularly like there, it's the idea that um, management in organizations needs to move towards a servant leadership model and away from um, people telling other people what to do and how to do it. So that's the core values we've got there. And that's it, that was a, a whirlwind run. I think I did the 10 minutes, right? And there's my email and my, my Twitter ID on there if you want to stay in touch. Thank you for listening. <laughs>